for you called Blues for Psy. <laughs> was a little four beat blues, Mike. Uh, you know, right? Uh, what do you? I mean, you, know, you got some things about that. I mean, you're more of an expert on that, living in New York and playing a lot, uh, a lot of jazz and things. Well, I think the main uh, thing that um, a rhythm player should understand about about swing music is um, no matter how much technical ability you have, or how fast you can play, or what innovative ideas you may have, the most important thing is is to be able to make it swing. And um, once you learn that swing um, is a rhythm the same as uh, backbeat rhythms, then um, you can start to really, uh, you know, attack that situation and develop something uh, really beautiful, you know, uh, 
in, as far as swing goes. And uh, playing the blues, when you talk about playing the blues, well, I, I could think of many different ways, styles of blues to play it. When you think of blues, you think of B.B. King, you know, or, but then also you could be thinking of uh, um, Count Basie or John Coltrane. So this kind of information, understanding um, the history of the music uh, and um, what piece of the puzzle fits uh, where is very important, yeah. but uh, even apart from all that, I'd say the main yeah. thing about swing is That's is true. it's got to swing. Yeah, but I think one of the biggest things that you really pointed out is that uh, is having uh, some knowledge of history of different types of music that are related. You know, and as far back as you can go. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I was listening to Dixieland. I, I've tried. We've we've done. You know, we've done jobs like that from everything. It gives you a, a much wider scope. To, to base your knowledge on and to have something to really develop upon in, in order to grow from, you know, it's, uh, well... In order to move forward, you yeah, have to understand right. where the music came from. And, uh, that's true. That's uh, very important, that's true. Uh, just as important as, you know, uh, technique yeah. or being able to, um, you know, uh, express your, uh, have your ideas manifest in the music. Yeah, uh, Mike, I, I think uh, now, I think it, it'd be re maybe really important. Uh, why don't you... Uh, give a little demonstration of different, some different styles uh, of, of this thing, of, of playing, uh, rhythms for, uh, for, for swing. You know, what is swing? You know, what is swing for, for a drummer? You know, and uh, then okay. after, I think I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll join you, but I'll let you start, start some different things. Okay. Okay, we'll try that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, as I've said before um, uh, earlier, swing is a rhythm, so I would like to demonstrate a, uh, in, the, in the following demonstration um, exactly how, how this works, okay? So uh, you notice I played uh, uh, the swing beat on the ride cymbal and then on the tom-tom. This was to show you that it is a rhythm. It's not a mystery. It's not, uh, it's not mental. You feel it the same way as you can feel backbeat music like most of the music today. Same thing. Gong, 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 you know. And on the cymbal, tang, 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 tang. So um, that's what I meant by that demonstration, that, that, that it is a rhythm and it, it should not be uh, looked at as a, mis as a m mystery, otherwise you can lose many years of your career. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's, it's another thing that actually you really just pointed out, Mike, that <laughs> I, I noticed a lot of the younger musicians don't do it. They don't really, they don't vocalize their part. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, and and you have a, it's a different feeling if you can like if if you know if I want to play something I'm, you know if I vocalize it it sometimes it, it gives me the, more of a natural feeling than actually trying to play it if I go do 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 I mean you know it, it, it's it, you know just like you do on the drum da, 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 da. Right. it's you know I think that's an important part of the thing about learning too you know you know so. well you know some of the great uh, jazz musicians. Uh, we've been hearing all our lives, you know, if you can sing it, you can play, play it. it. That's true. That's true. That's true. How about uh, another different style of uh, something in the four beat, what, what we're talking about on four beat and playing jazz, because, I mean, you've been doing a lot of work on that. I mean, yeah. well, some of the modern jazz <laughs> styles, how about a little, little thing about that? Okay, so uh, maybe we can demonstrate a little brighter tempo, and uh, and rather than playing the hi hat on the two and the four, and using the uh, you know the stock kind of uh, devices, for lack of a better word, um, uh, we'll show you how to play a little brighter cut and and uh, and break it up a little bit, uh, quote unquote modern or post bop. Yeah, playing. yeah, it's, uh, this, yeah. We'll use a little bit more modern thing. This is this is more of a thing of like a bass player actually keeping keeping more of a vamp and. While the drummer breaks up the, the rhythm in time, mm. this will be interesting. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, now, after that, I think the best thing to go is then we're going to talk about time feeling. There's many different types of ways of creating a different feeling in the music from either the drummer playing behind or not only just together with you. Uh, in musicians' terms, they call this how big your pocket is. It's, so, I mean, this is how wide of a groove. You can make a groove very narrow feeling and very tight feeling by playing exactly right on the time and everything else. So you can make it feel wide and have a lot more feeling by the way that the drums and bass relationship balance each other from, from the different ways that, that he would play time. So Mike is now going to demonstrate a drummer playing <coughs> actually right, almost right, very straight and together with the bass line. We're going to be doing the same rhythm over and over, but you should be able to hear the differences in the sound. This first one will be us playing together, very tight and straight. Yeah, that's, that's with the drums playing pretty tight and right on it. Now you can play the same tempo, we'll play the same groove. And this is with Mike playing, with a, putting a lot more feeling, adding a lot more feeling to the rhythm by playing his backbeat behind, a little bit behind the, behind the actual downbeat. It makes it feel, he doesn't slow down, but it's just the way that it makes it feel wider on the groove. Here it goes. Now when a drummer does this, you can also add a lot more tension to this by the bass player playing a little bit more on top of the beat. So it sounds almost like he's pulling the drummer. Okay, now we'd like to give a mix. This is like a combination of not, of not only playing straight ahead and real tight together, but also ha being able to lay back some part of the beats in, in the syncopated type rhythm. This is more or less actually what we really do together. Uh, we'll be breaking this up. This is a combination of both though. If you listen carefully, you'll hear some of the beats drop way in the back, and uh, but at the same time, the, the time is is actually really has a, a feeling of moving forward. Here we go. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's different types of grooves and, and how to make them feel. Uh, so far as the way that the drummer, the relationship of the drummer and, and the bass together and how they play. Another important part, uh, which I definitely want to hand over to Mike right now, is it's like drummers fill-ins. And what type of fill-ins do you play on? What type of music? And, and the proper relationship is something that uh, I think 
that a lot of musicians, young musicians, could, could need to know. Mike, you know, take it from the yeah, drums. Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, um, what, what, what he's um, talking about, once again, is history. You must study the music because um, it's a language. And uh, if you're in, the, uh, in a different country, um, and you don't know the language, then you're going to have problems getting around <clears throat> without a lot of help. And it's the same with the music. Um, so um, I have studied and am still continuing to study uh, music Never starting stopped. with, uh, like, say, in jazz music uh, from uh, Louis Armstrong to uh, Wynton Marcellus. Um, and the same uh, study I'm constantly making all my life of uh, the blues, you know, and um, also... Uh, funky music, uh, uh, rhythm and blues music from, um, uh, you know, the 50s um, until now. So in order to know uh, pretty much what kinds of fill-ins go with what kind of bass lines, then we're talking about you have to know the language so you know the answer to the questions or being proposed to you. So this is a, a, a constant study and it's like a... Um, uh, a thing that I consider myself um, sort of an expert on, and yes. uh, or you know, for and, example, and, uh, <laughs> and so I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, say we'll, we'll talk about backbeat music uh, um, of fill-ins ranging from say uh, fill-ins that might be used in the fifties, uh, sixties, um, and now in the nineties. Okay. So um, uh, during the 60s, um, the rhythm patterns changed. They got a little bit more complex. So the fills changed uh, along with them. So uh, now I'd like to demonstrate uh, three um, types of fills that were probably used during the 60s or that I know for a fact were used during the 60s and um, like that. So uh, that brings us up to uh, the 70s, yeah. and uh, <laughs> this is uh, pretty much where Paul and I came in uh, uh, when we started working with Herbie Hancock, and we invented um, or added on we to added the language. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it started out, what, I think what happened in the 70s when we, when we really started back then was that like, it became okay for, uh, for, for the fill-ins between a bass player and, 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 and the drums, you know, to play to actually play off of each other so that so that like uh it, it it added a different type of unity and it also added more space so that like uh so a bass player would play a f like a like almost like a bass lead uh and type of fill-in to set up a drum part a drummer part and, and drums would do the same and leave space for things to happen as part of the rhythm as you know that unify the, the parts it wasn't like it was a it wasn't like a bass part and just a, on a drum part it was like one thing it came it, that came together and also yeah. uh, there wasn't a definite backbeat on the two and the four you just kind of played the backbeat wherever you felt it so for the yeah. drum set um, um, it was sort of like soloing between the bass the snare and the hi-hat it, it opened for, everything up yeah exactly yeah. creative improv but yet um, the time was still there everybody knew where the one was yeah well let's try a little bit of that okay <laughs>
Okay, next we have a live demonstration of a song that demonstrates a little bit of some of the things that we've been teaching so far. And um, this is a really a, a joyous occasion for both Paul and myself. Is a, this is a, a reunion. We haven't worked together in five years. So the same as um, all music styles uh, tend to develop and, and move forward and advance, what we attempted to do was take the style that we created, Paul and I together, and um, and, and have it advance as well. So, so uh, um, we did this uh, unrehearsed. We just went for it. It was very spontaneous. So we made an attempt to update the rhythms that we've been using um, thus far. Okay? Yeah.
Okay, now we like me and Mike would like to replay the groove that we we played on the song before, so you can get a clear understanding of it. Mike's going to play and break up the groove a little bit more as we go along, so you can understand maybe a little bit more about the relationship between the bass and the drum part. Explaining that, you know, I mean, the bass part is actually pretty standard. Uh, not standard, but I mean, it's it lays in a, lays in a, in, a, in a pocket, you know. But the thing that you're playing is is pretty unusual. Would you mind explaining that? To <clears throat> no, not at all. Um, what I did was I I um, I picked uh, key pivot points out of Paul's bass line and uh, anchored that down with my bass drum, and then I tried to. Uh, find um, what they call uh, ghost notes. Oh, the don, the don't, right? That's what yeah, the don, don't, 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 don't. Yeah. So all the things that weren't don, don't, I refer to as ghost notes. So um, uh, what I did was use a four-way drum style. What's where, a four-way drum style? Well, a four-way drum style is, is rather than um, an independent drum style where, say, the left hand is playing one rhythm and the right hand is playing another, this is where each limb plays a separate note apart from the other one. That's what? like both their arms and, and both feet. You're doing a completely four-way thing. Yeah, exactly. And what I tried to do was find the important bass notes and anchor those down with my bass drum and then, and then uh, find uh, creative ghost patterns, they call it ghosting, to yeah. uh, move around inside yeah. that bass line to, to cr create an interesting effect. Hey, can, can you, is there any way that you can maybe uh, demonstrate like a... Uh, an exercise or something for the four way for this for the four way independent type rhythm for, you know for maybe the, i think maybe drummers would be interested in and in, in, in being able to see something like that certainly okay you can do that yeah okay let's let's do <coughs> that a little demonstration That's amazing. How long, how long did it take you to develop that? I've been doing it since uh, about 1970, but uh, I just found out during that demonstration that it's, it's easier for me to play faster than it is slower. Yeah, so, well, uh, why don't you do it fast once? Great, okay. Let's hear it. Thank you. 
Yeah, I guess the uh, only other thing we got to kind of get down into is the different rhythm styles. Uh, some of the basic things. Let's start with like uh, some of the old shuffles. What do you think about that? What, which, what do you like to start Well, the, with? the first thing I would um, show if I would, would demonstrate, if I were teaching, would be um, um, just well, the teaching, old, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, just the old um, Bill Doggett honky tonk okay. style. Okay, honky tonk? Yeah. Okay, honky tonk, here we go. So here's one of my favorites. Um, um, this is a certain version of uh, what they call the Texas Shuffle. Texas Shuffle, oh yeah. Yeah, Mike, that was that was a lot of fun playing that that old shuffle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll let you explain about it this time. Go on. You, Thank you, you, Paul. you got, you got <coughs> Okay, it. you got it. <laughs> um, I'll just simplify things by saying um, um, the next shuffle we're getting ready to play is is um, sort of the Albert King um, real Texas uh, faster shuffle where you keep the notes a little more closer together than one might think. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah, Mike, uh, I think it's time to, uh, to talk a little bit about playing four beat. We gave a, earlier we gave a uh, more of a demonstration of, of uh, playing, but the practical side of it and playing together uh, so far as the bass and, and drums is that, uh, let's say a medium tempo four, four beat type, type thing. Mm -hmm. You're playing like, uh, see, your left hand's a little bit is, is behind is behind. Once you just, just explain that, because I, I want to, I want you to explain that, and then so I'll I'll relate to like how the bass player would would play for I it. See. Like you know, in a medium tempo, actually to, to pull it up a little bit, the bass, the bass would <coughs> would more. I usually try to play a little bit more on top of the beat, and a little mm -hmm. bit more in front in front of it, and, and and a little bit more in front of it, and kick it back with with, with different feels, you know, with, with little bit feels, but more or less like the bass is kind of like, uh, like like adding. A kind of a, a energy, like the, like a, like it's like the battery to of our electric engine. It's getting, getting the real power, power behind it. It's in, you know, and the drummer's kind of like, kind of like driving the thing. You know, he's really like the engineer, really driving the place on it. You know, I mean, how do you relate to that? I mean, how do you relate to playing with with a bass player? Well, 
um, pretty much what you said is exactly it, 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 it except from a drummer's um, point well, of from view. From the drummer's uh, side, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, um, I play a little bit behind the beat on the cymbal and uh, a, uh, little, yeah. a little bit lazy. And it makes a little tension. Time. Exactly, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, because if you try to drive the beat out at a medium tempo, it makes it sound too tight or too stiff for me. And then, no. and then the That's conversation good. between the left hand bass drum and hi hat uh, in a medium tempo, I find that triplets are uh, a triplet kind of feel is the easiest way for me. I mean, me if you to had to through. sing it, I mean, it would be like da 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 I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, you can sing that. I mean, you know, for I mean, this. Well, if I had to sing it, I would say. Okay, I'll sing a bass part. Okay, I would sing. Okay, that's right. That's how you do it. That's what's happening. This, hey, okay. Just we'll do. We we've done this before, but like just to really illustrate it a little bit more. Let's let's try it one more time. Okay. Okay, yeah, that was like some medium, the laid back type type of thing. Right. Yeah, we can. Uh, how about the fast temples? What's what's a little bit different on that? I usually the bass is going really straight ahead, pretty pretty straight ahead. I usually try to keep a, a, a get a flow where it's like it, where it just forms a kind of energy where, it, where it, you know like it has a, a lot of movement in it, mm -hmm. has a lot of movement energy in it, not rushing but like but every do 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 you know walks walks through the thing and then. For the drums, how do you accent relate to that uh, when you play the, with a bass player? Well, I just try to keep the time together and uh, and and do things that sound sensible, mm -hmm. and don't try to take too many chances until I get really comfortable with it, and then I start applying, you yeah. know, my type of language into the music. But um, uh, mainly, I just try to um, hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about let's let's just take some let's for example just one course of. Uh, Rhythm changes. Okay. Let's see how it works out. Okay, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Like, I think now, see, we're up to getting into. I'd like to talk a little bit about the 16 beat thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. where it came to and the 16 beat funk. I mean, it's like, for me, it's all, it seemed like it just about started in Oakland. You know, uh, uh, I mean, for, for uh, except for, I mean, a few few people, like you, uh, Clive Stubblefield. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of the first guys yeah. I ever heard do that. Yeah, drummer with James Brown through the '60s. Yeah, what was he doing? Because it really it made the bass part just walk. It made the time just keep on moving. You know, it had really a lot of energy in it. Well, I knew a guy that um, 
uh, was a musical director of that band, and and he Which had band a, was that? Uh, one, James Brown's band. James Brown's. Okay. Yeah, and he had to write out uh, Clyde's parts one time, and he said that everywhere there was a sixteenth note, Clyde would play something. You know what I mean? So right. I I think that's how that. Yeah, um, came about, and also Bernard Purdy had it. Bernard you know, had it really, yeah. Great the, hand. The combination of Bernard well. and Jerry Jermont was uh, absolutely. They were they were really rocking yeah. too, on that. And see, what was the thing? Is it like the sixty? They kept it. Mo was it mostly in the snare drum, or or, or was it, or just dropping it almost every place? Dropping it almost every place. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, do you mostly have, in the hi hat, really. Mostly in the hi hat. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's do a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay. This the, the early the earlier earlier stuff first. <laughs> The earlier stuff first, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll try. Yeah, that did it. That, <laughs> that did, did it, it. Yeah, that did it. <coughs> See, then after that, then you took it. Uh, you had you had another. There's another part of it that, that uh, mm. where they started to add the. Not only that, but they had the hi hat, the hi hat thing working for against itself. So like it was almost like uh, it, it it swung, you know. And that's what's happening on the thing. Like it, it still had the swing in it, you know. And uh, you know, which made that groove real heavy. Let's let's do a little bit of that. Okay. Yeah, see, that, yeah, like that groove was a, that was a real give it up, turn me loose from James Brown thing. It was a little bit tighter and a, tighter of a groove, and more, more, more stiffer mm -hmm. type of thing. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I always like actually, I like always like the, the first one, the one we did before. That was it's, always your favorite. That was, yeah, all, that was always my favorite yeah. because like it had the swing thing. <laughs> but there's something that came after that actually during that same time. I'm, I'm using basically I'm using the same bass line right now, just to kind of mm -hmm. il illustrate. The difference in the way I would I change the way I play the bass line in order to, to match the rhythm that that, that you're doing, mm -hmm. you know. How's that work for you? Well, it, it feels great. That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, okay. Let's go. I mean, going on. Let's go on. Go on. Okay. There, I mean, there is there's there's there actually a couple of more because you know, I want to bring it all the way up to date. Mm -hmm. But uh, before we do that, give me a little of that that hi hat that, that hi hat when you make the hi hat walk and, and you're doing the ride you still got that that thing happening oh, yeah, okay. and the uh, and you know, in the in the the, the left hand on the on the symbol. You know, okay. That 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 was, that was another really great beat. Okay, we'll try a little bit of that. <laughs> I think the next song we're going to show on the live is from uh, Geraldine's Revenge. Thank you. 
Yeah, that was a pretty straightforward song. It just uh, kind of just demonstrated just some of the things of, of bass playing and having the feel, playing a line and you're answering your own question. That's pretty much what that, what that song was about on the live. Let's see, going on, I think one of the last, last little things I'd like to, like to mic the show is, uh, because it, it, it gives me a new idea. It's when drummers can come up with, with different beats and everything, he's always great for, for coming up with some strange stuff. But he has a couple of special techniques that uh, I like to show off and maybe even get a chance to find, see if I can find something to play with right now. It's, uh, it's a new hi-hat technique that I haven't heard before until he just came here to Japan to make this video with me and do these concerts. Mike, I want you to show me that. Cause, uh, or tell me about it. How do you get that thing? It's a real fast hi-hat thing that you do. It's, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it sounds almost like a roll on it, but like you're, but you're not really doing it. Can you explain it? I, 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 you know. Well, it is kind of like a roll, but I'm dividing it up between the different drums, hands and feet, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it starts on the, on the hi-hat and then go, and goes and answers with the snare. It's, it's, it's actually... Well, it can start either place. In either place and go Yeah, play. yeah. You mind but, um, showing me that and let's see if I can see if I can come up with something to play for? Sure. With it. Okay. me man i don't know what it was i don't either <laughs> well we just made that up you know i mean if you want to learn how to make a groove you have to just kind of jump in and do it that's the best advice i can tell you is you got to go out there and just try something you know i mean we never did that before and, no, and uh, already we got ideas for it yeah so we want to try it again we want another chance just a little okay just a little bit i don't know what together, i don't man. know what it was i was playing but <laughs> and I'm gonna try to make it come out even. Okay, this time, okay. Whatever yeah. it was. don't make it come out even. That, you know, <laughs> probably won't be able was to. It? Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
You did it, man. You did it again. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I guess we nice. did it. Yeah, I think so. Try it anyway. Well, I'd like to say goodbye to all the fans and everybody out there. I appreciate it. Mike? See you later, everybody, and yeah. thank you very much. Parting, parting advice for a bass player. Get a drum that you can do. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man, come on. You want to go? You want to go? go?